Chapter 401, Spirit Refined Titanium Gold, Tang Wilin's hammers glowed with soul power, gone was the gentleness from before, they came down upon the titanium crystal like an endless, crashing waterfall, thundering booms now shaking the arena, the explosions of sound were further amplified by the stacked hammers effect, upon being thousand refined, his hammers were capable of drawing on his soul power, however, after being spirit refined, they could now use his soul power to its fullest potential, soul power surged through Tang Wilin's body like roaring waves, he didn't hold any part of himself back, compared to his first spirit refining, he now had enough soul power to spare, even if he did run out of soul power, he still had the power of his bloodline at his disposal, in addition to that, the two beam buns he had previously eaten roused his blood, he could take advantage of that to reverse the flow of his blood, the technique that had helped him complete golden dragon shocks the heavens and defeat Wusituo, after successfully activating golden dragon shocks the heavens and reversing his blood flow, Tang Wuling perfected the technique and could now use it on command. In doing so, his blood essence became 30% stronger, and when he used Golden Dragon Shocks the Heavens, his power doubled. As of now, his strongest attack consisted of his Dragon Claw, his Gauntlet, and Golden Dragon Shocks the Heavens. Tang Wuling had long since been able to harness the power of his bloodline to reduce his stamina consumption, improving his forging efficacy. Spirit refining titanium crystal was nothing to him now. He could use his blood essence as a substitute for his soul power, and doing so will also increase his chances of successful spirit refining a metal. During the past few days of forging alloys, he noticed that his success rate had increased. It was clear to him that the bond between metal and blood essence was deeper than the one between metal and soul power. After that discovery, Tang Wuling's level of forging entered a whole new realm. He didn't increase in rank, but his success rate soared. This was the reason why he could forge the titanium crystal so perfectly today. Tang Wuling's hammers rained down on the titanium crystal. The golden ball inside of it grew brighter with each heavy hit, growing larger as the crystal that encased it became smaller. This was a truly bizarre thing to behold. It looked as if you were actually granting life to the metal. Everyone knew that titanium crystal was spirit refined the moment that only its gold remained. Titanium gold had an astronomical value. It was one of the top ten metals and could be reforged into an alloy. Forget normal soul masters. Even titled Dilios desired such a metal. All who were not yet four word battle armor masters would. A single piece of titanium gold could drastically boost the toughness and other properties of battle armor. It was an absolute treasure. Titanium crystal was rare, but finding titanium gold was like spotting a unicorn. A piece once appeared in an auction auction and sold for a whopping 80 million coins. It was so rare that it didn't have a set market value. Tang Wuling had imbued the metal with his blood essence as he forged. He was the only one who could finish forging it now. If that weren't the case, Feng Wei would have jumped into finishing himself. No one would pass up an opportunity to obtain some titanium gold. Even with Feng Wei's cultivation level and status as a three-word battle armor master, only three pieces of his battle armor had titanium gold infused in them. Feng Wei bowled his hands into tight fists. You have to succeed. Tang Wuling's soul power depleted rapidly as he forged the titanium crystal. Every strike of his hammer sent a burst of soul power into the titanium crystal, reducing its size and branding it life. Titanium crystal was much faster to spirit refine than other metals. However, this speed came at the cost of increased soul power consumption during the refining process. The amount of consumption was so shocking that Tang Wuling couldn't keep up. Only 15 minutes had passed by the time Tang Wuling's soul power ran out. As soon as it did, his three purple soul rings disappeared and a resplendent golden one took their place. Tang Wuling called his blood essence forth in a surge of awesome power, activating golden dragon body as an intense, draconic roar resounded from deep within him. Anyone with sharp eyes would see golden scales shimmering faintly in the air around him. From his seat on the platform that overlooked the arena, Choi Shi gawked at Tang Wuling. He succeeded. That brat succeeded at learning my dragon shocks the heavens with just three soul rings. I had to wait until I had five rings before I could refine my bloodline to half that of a true dragon's and complete it. No wonder he can forge like that. He's using the power of his bloodline to supplement his forging. Golden light streams from Tang Wuling's spirit refined heavy silver hammers as his blood essence coursed through them. The golden ball on the forging table before him shrank rapidly as he continued to forge. He could feel the connection between the metal and his bloodline growing deeper and more intense. The titanium crystal was an infant about to be born and on the verge of gaining awareness. Tang Wuling could feel his blood essence roar within him. It was being consumed at a much slower pace than his soul power had been. He allowed its flow to reverse, feeling no need to really control it. The aura of his blood essence immediately grew thicker, a warmth spreading throughout his body. Room after boom filled the air. The song of Tang Wuling's forging now followed the same tune as his outings had. In fact, it was even louder. The titanium crystal grew brighter with each strike. The golden ball rapidly filling the space that the crystal of the metal previously occupied. Tell you what. He's about to succeed at spirit refining. Hey, he's actually a fifth rank blacksmith. He's outbanged there at Tang Wuling in shock. At the age of 17, he was the oldest student in the second grade. He always thought himself a prodigy for becoming a fourth rank blacksmith at the age of 17. Yet Mu Zai, being a fourth rank blacksmith herself, transferred in and showed him that wasn't the case. If she hadn't transferred in late, she might have threatened his position as blacksmith representative of the second grade. Even before this match, some said she should go up instead of him. They had believed it impossible for the first grade to win and thought it would be a good chance for her to show off her skills. In the end, however, the teacher had settled on him being the one to go up, saying that the first grade had an extremely talented blacksmith. He's outbanged hadn't minded the teacher's words back then, but he hadn't looked down on his opponent either. He believed that, as long as he did his best, victory was certain. Yet reality had played out differently. He's outbanged had performed to the very best of his ability today. Even surpassing his limits a bit, he had been completely satisfied with the result. But then Tang Wuling did the impossible. He's still young. He can't be more than 15, much younger than me, yet he can actually spirit refine. I don't even know when I'll be able to. In the audience, a pair of shining eyes stared at Tang Wuling in astonishment. These eyes belonged to Mu Zai. Mu Zai knew Tang Wuling was a fifth rank blacksmith, but this was her first time seeing him spirit refine. He really can do it. That golden light should be his blood essence. I can't believe it's already so strong. He's even more amazing than before. As Tang Wuling's senior sister, no one understood his blacksmithing skill and his comprehension level better than her. She had been absolutely certain that Tang Wuling would be the first grade's blacksmith representative, so she hadn't fought his outing for their own grade's position. She didn't want to compete with Tang Wuling because she never won against him before, and she knew this time would be no different. Mu Zai's smile grew wider and wider as she watched him forge. He's advanced step by step, and now he's able to spirit refine titanium crystal. Is there anything he can't do? Fortunately, none of her classmates paid any attention to her. They were all focused on the spectacle happening on stage. If some had seen her face, they surely would have doubted which side she was on. Tang Wuling brought his hammers down upon the titanium crystal once more. They struck the metal, sending a thundering tremor through the arena and everyone present. The golden light around Tang Wuling began to fade, and all of a sudden, a crack appeared in the titanium crystal. Everyone stared at the middle, eyes wide, a crack, there's a crack in it, did he, did he actually fail, the crack spread, the process was slow at first, the first crack slowly giving way to another, gradually making its way across the surface of the crystalline metal like a web being patiently spun, yet that patience was soon forgotten, cracks quickly ran rampant across the metal ball, branching off into two, then four, then eight, until a myriad of them completely covered the ball, then, after a tense moment, the crystal broke apart, thin translucent flakes fell away from the ball one by one, each coming to rest atop the forging table to reveal a flawless golden ball that exuded life, the holy spirit Dulo could clearly feel the life force within the metal, she nodded imperceptibly, a warm smile forming on her lips, or filled her eyes, the golden ball resembled a
Feng Wei nodded, still unable to hide his smile. Tang Wolin had bestowed life onto the titanium crystal. He had succeeded in spirit refining it into titanium gold. He was no longer a fifth rank blacksmith in name alone. Although he had focused solely on forging alloys since reaching this rank, it had imperceptibly influenced his refining ability, particularly his control and perception. Feng Wei had no right to be fussy with such a talented disciple. The match is over. Tang Wolin of the first grade is the winner. Shen Yu declared. The result had long since been clear to everyone, but this made it official. He Zhao Peng quietly descended from the stage while Tang Wolin returned to his classmates amidst their cheers. Tang Wolin flashed a smile at his classmates, then gestured to Shu Lizzie. Upon seeing that signal, Shu Lizzie jogged over and handed Tang Wolin some pork buns he had prepared beforehand. Tang Wolin devoured them, then sat down cross-legged to meditate. Spirit refining the titanium crystal had drained him, but he would soon have to go up for the team battle. He had to take every moment he could to recover. The second match will be fought through mecha designing, Shen Yi announced. Would the representatives please come up? The students of the second grade could hardly believe that they lost the first match, but they weren't too concerned. He Zhao Peng had still put on a splendid performance. Tang Wolin was just a freak of nature. He Zhao Peng never had a chance. Hu Yue looked at Tang Wolin for a moment, her eyes slightly narrowed, then took the stage. Hu Yue's opponent took the stage as well. She was a tall and no less beautiful than Yu Zai. Unlike the girls of the first grade, she possessed a hint of maturity. She looked to be the same age as Yi Zhao Peng, about sixteen or seventeen, a young lady in the prime of her youth. In comparison, Hu Yue had average looks. Nothing about her really drew the eyes of others. The most charming thing about her was her cool temperament. For this match, the forging tables remained on the stage. Their flat surfaces would do just as well for design drafting as they were forging. The girl from the second grade glanced at a boy in the audience and flashed a sweet smile at him. The boy nodded in response. That boy was Yuan and Yui. She she didn't miss this. He gulped at the two, his mind reeling from the exchange. What's going on? If I didn't know any better, I think they were a couple. Satisfied, the girl then turned to Gu Yue. Hello, I'm Bai Hanyin from the second grade. Please advise me. First grade's Gu Yue. Shen Yu looked between the two girls, then walked to the edge of the platform once more. This designing match will test your reasoning and the quality of your design. You have 30 minutes to design a right gauntlet for a set of battle armor. You can use your old designs. Elder Kai will personally select the winner. A gauntlet. Upon hearing that, the students of the first grade cheered. Tang Wolin's team had crafted his right gauntlet. Considering the relationship between Gu Yue and Tang Wolin, they were certain that she designed it. Since she was capable of creating a design for a piece of one word battle armor, they believed they had this match in the bag. Graph paper and writing instruments were immediately delivered to the stage and placed on the forging tables. The moment everything was set up, Shen Yi cried, Begin. With that declaration, the pencils of the two competitors began to dance, the contents of their minds pouring out onto the paper. It was fundamentally impossible to create a design from scratch in just 30 minutes. What this match truly tested was their design fundamentals. Gu Yue didn't draw too quickly or too slowly. Her pencil moved steadily across the paper, never stopping for even a moment. The form of the gauntlet quickly took shape on her paper. On the other side of the stage, Bai Hanyin drew much faster, constantly erasing and revising her design. In spite of that, she made quick progress. Soon off. The 30 allotted minutes ran out. The second they did, Bai Hanyin and Gu Yue put their pencils down at practically the same time. The two designs were delivered to Elder Kai. She handed one of them to the Holy Spirit Duo. The two titled Duos took a few minutes to inspect the designs and discuss them. Once they came to a consensus, Elder Kai stood up. Gu Yue and Bai Hanyin looked up at the platform expectantly. This match is a draw. Elder Kai looked between the two girls. Gu Yue, your design for a one word gauntlet incorporates spirit alloys and is very comprehensive. It's a practical and effective design. Bai Hanyin, your design is much more complicated, and it implemented many advanced theories perfectly. However, the overall design is flawed. If you manage to complete it, you'll have become a fifth ranked designer. Is your design meant for someone with twin martial souls? Bai Hanyin nodded. Yes, Elder Kai. Elder Kai continued, in order to perfect your design, you should work together with Gu Yue. You will be able to complement each other and make up for your deficiencies, making it far easier to complete the design. Adding spirit alloys to the design would vastly improve a one-word gauntlet net for someone with twin martial souls. You would waste a lot of time if you work independently. By Hanyin turned to look at Gu Yue, a flicker of hesitation in her eyes. Designing battle armor for someone with twin martial souls was already a difficult task. Adding spirit alloys to the design would push it beyond the domain of her current abilities. Feeling by Hanyin's gaze, Gu Yue turned to look her in the eye. She already understood what the girl's goal was. That design was most likely for Yuan and Yui. It was in this way that the second match concluded. The first grade now led the competition with one win and one draw. Gu Yue was over two years younger than her opponent, but she was able to bring the match to a draw. This was victory enough for them. Both competitors left the stage. The students in the first grade welcomed Gu Yue back with loud cheers. They had done well in the first two matches so far, and this boosted their confidence. However, the first grade suffered a crushing defeat in the third match. Tang Wolin didn't recognize the mega maker the second grade sent out. He was a fourth rank maker, but the first grade only had the third rank Luo Gixing. The difference between the two clear, and defeat came swiftly. The fourth match, on the other hand, was surprisingly even. Wu Si Joy was quite a gifted mechanic, but her opponent was the class president of the second grade, Yuan and Yui. Yuan and Yui won by a thin margin in the end, but she knew that she was older than Wu Si Joy by a year, so she couldn't feel satisfied by the win. With the conclusion of the fourth match, the second grade had two wins, one draw, and one loss. It seemed as though their victory was certain, but they didn't seem happy at all. Considering the age difference, it became clear that the second grade was actually weaker than the first grade. If they did win, it wouldn't be a true victory. Chapter 403, six versus six. Now, for the final match of this competition, Shen Yi announced. The team battle. Both teams will now come up. The first grade's team may have between three and seven people. The second grade's team may number one less than the first grade's. Her voice didn't hold even the slightest hint of bias. No, Ella Kai cut in. The second grade team feel the same number of competence as the first grade. Understood. Shen Yi said without batting an eye. The second grade's team will number the same as the first grade's. How large is the first grade's team? Seated cross legged, Tang Wolin slowly opened his eyes. The first grade's team has six people. Yuan and Yui looked at him. Their gazes clashed like a burst of sparks. She could see the blazing determination in his eyes. This guy certainly lives up to his position as their team captain. Shen Yi turned to the second grade. The second grade's team may send out six people. You all have three minutes to prepare. After that, the match will begin. Off among the spectators, we see stared at Tang Wolin. Her fingers twitched as she hesitated to say something, but in the end, she held her silence. She had heard about the strength of the second grade's class president. This made her yearn to battle him, but she hadn't earned the right to. If it weren't for her and Luo Dixing being so stubborn in the past, they would have been going on that stage as well. The first grade's team was composed of Tang Wolin, Yu Yue, Yu Xinglin, Shu Lizzie, Shu Xiaoan, and Shu Shi. At the opposite end of the arena, Yuan and Yui, Yi Zhaopeng, Bai Hanying, Yue Sang Yu, Yu Zingmo, and Duan Hongxiao gathered. Up on the elevated platform, the Holy Spirit Duo turned to Elder Kai and smiled. Which side do you think is going to win? Yue Yue, Elder Kai laughed. Why are you asking me that, Ella Sister Yali? The first grade has essentially already won. Do you know I have faith in them? I watched the selection tournament and saw for myself just how powerful this year's new students are. They actually could have sent out a full team of seven and increased their odds of winning. The second grade's team isn't weak either, Elder Kai said. Their class president, Yuan
Hu Yue, Xu Xiaolong, and Xu Lizzi were positioned behind him, seeing that their opponents had taken stage. Yuan and Yui led her team up as well, having yet to release her martial soul. Yuan and Yui didn't seem very imposing with her average size. However, in the split second she locked eyes with Tang Walin, an oppressive aura began to swell around her. Tang Walin may have already been familiar with her, but this would be his first time actually facing her as an opponent, and just as he was familiar with her, she was familiar with him. She knew that he was the heart of his team, and as long as she defeated him, the victory would belong to the second raid. Her five teammates quickly got into position. He Zhao Bang stood to her left, Yue Sang to her right. Yi Zingmo and Duan Hong Xiao stood behind them with Bai Hanying sandwiched in the middle. Tang Walin was already drawing up plans the moment he saw how they were arranged. Considering the battle formation, they shouldn't have a support type soul master. All of them should be combat oriented. That Bai Hanying is probably a control type, so the rest should be assault or agility types. His eyes swept from Bai Hanying to the others. Yuan and Yui and Yue Sang are definitely assault types. He Zhao Bang probably is too. That means Yi Zingmo and Duan Hong Xiao are probably agility types. Their team composition wouldn't be balanced without any agility types after all. Standing at one edge of the stage, the hint of a smile played at the Holy Spirit Duo's lips as she looked between the two teams. You have 30 seconds left. Chen Yu announced from the platform. Prepare for battle. Right on cue. Tang Walin took a step forward, power radiating from his body and waves. He knew that Yuan and Yui was the cornerstone of the opposing team, and now both he and her were posturing. He sucked in a deep breath, and his eyes became a bright gold, a mighty aura thickening around him. The draining of a faint roar emanated from deep within his body. A golden vein flickered to life at the base of his neck, throbbing with power. Yuan and Yui urged her aura to soar higher in response. They partook in battle of wills before the match even began. Tang Walin was an unstoppable wave, while Yuan and Yui was an immovable mountain. The clash of their resolves switched the surrounding air into a frenzy. Tang Walin understood how formidable Yuan and Yui was, but defeat had never crossed his mind. His eyes had always been set on winning. Begin. Without even summoning his martial soul, Tang Walin shot forward like a cannonball, hurtling straight at Yuan and Yui. A single golden soul ring appeared as he activated golden dragon body instead. His body swelled with strength and golden scales materialized down his right arm. The hand transforming into a dragon claw. Light then gathered around the claw and become a fitting gauntlet. With the resplendent golden battle armor gauntlet equipped, his strength soared to its peak. He's going all out from the get-go. All of the second grade students were shocked. Yuan and Yui, however, took action in a similar fashion. The instant the match started, she leapt forward, her body undergoing the Titan Giant ape transformation in the air. As she finished transforming, she activated Diamond Titan. She hit the stage with a rumble, leapt forward again to soar directly at Tang Walin. The battle had just begun, yet the champions of each team were already clashing. As for their teammates, they all did their own thing. Xu Xiaolin held Yu Yue's hand as she stepped forward and conjured up a blizzard. She she vanished into the blizzard. Xu Lizzie stood in place, muttering chants to himself as he produced bun after bun. Yi Zingling replaced Tang Walin at the front of the formation, standing guard over those who remained. At the other end of the stage, the second grade students all summoned their martial souls. Two yellow soul rings and one purple soul ring appeared around his outing. His martial soul was a large silver hammer, the head of which resembled a flower in full bloom. His martial soul was called the eight petal plum blossom silver hammer. Unfortunately for him, it was only a single hammer. Otherwise, he could have forged with it. Just as Tang Walin guessed, he was an assault type soul master. Yue Sang Yu also summoned his holy angel martial soul. His second soul ring lit up and a holy sword appeared in his hand. Together with his outing, he advanced on the first grade team in a pincer attack. Behind them, using Mo and Duan Hongxiao jumped into action. Using Mo shot forward, now wielding a sword in hand, a golden star shone on his forehead. He moved astonishingly fast, overtaking his outing in a single flash of movement. With another, he would reach his targets. In the same breath, Duan Hongxiao summoned a flute with a wave of his hand. Four soul rings revolved around it, two yellow and two purple. He snatched it out of the air and blew on it, filling the arena with a melancholic tune. It washed over the first grade competitors, overwhelming them with a wave of dizziness. This was Duan Hongxiao's crowd control soul skill, soul tuning. Chapter 404, A Battle of Kings. Duan Hongxiao's melancholic tune continued to resonate throughout the arena. The intensity of the blizzard began to weaken, clearly showing it was having an effect on the other team. By Hanian smiled and took a step back, letting Duan Hongxiao take her place. A tree branch covered in beautiful blossoming flowers appeared in her hand. This was her martial soul, a cherry blossom. She swung it with a flourish, dispersing the petals through the air. They floated to her teammates and released a gentle light as they came to rest on each of them. Tang Walin was wrong. They did have a support type soul master. That was by Hanying. This single move drastically bolstered the strength of the second grade team. At the very center of the arena, the two class presidents met. A boom tore through the air, the ground trembling as their fists met in midair. Yuan and Yui were shocked to find herself being pushed by Tang Walin's strength. The golden aura around Tang Walin flared as he exerted strength through his legs and leapt after her in pursuit. Although Yuan and Yui were sent retreating, she didn't suffer any real injuries. With some breathing room now, she retaliated and used air cannon, sending a bombardment of shockwaves back at Tang Walin. Duan Hongxiao took his chance to blow another note. Tang Walin's strength dipped under the note's influence. Yet Tang Walin's expression was a serene still warrior. He thrust his hands out before him and used controlling crane, capturing dragon, a powerful repulsive force deflected Yuan and Yui's barrage to the side. Turning his head, Tang Walin sent a look to Duan Hongxiao's way. Duan Hongxiao had just been about to blow another note, but Tang Walin's eyes flashed purple as he spiritually attacked him. Soul tuning was a powerful crowd control soul skill. Once someone fell prey to its effects, it would be hard for them to break free. However, these effects were kind to appear. That was soul tuning's fatal flaw. The moment Tang Walin interrupted it, the blizzard regained its frigid strength and rapidly swelled to envelop the entire battlefield. It was at this moment that Yuzingmo reached the first grade team. He Zhao and Yue's Hanyu followed right behind him, the three forming a spearhead to penetrate through the first grade team's formation. They had practiced this tactic before. The spacing between each other was perfect. All three were just close enough to support each other at a moment's notice, yet far enough to not hinder one another. On the first grade team's side, only Yuzingmo stood in their way. Yuzingmo raised his sword and thrust it outward before him. The golden star on his forehead shining as a golden beam extended from his sword's tip. Yi Zinglin struck out with her own sword to meet Yuzingmo's. A sprinkle of light trailed behind her sword, outlining the path it took. The instant the two swords met, a baptism of light engulfed the stage. The miserable shriek of metal against metal pierced the air. The clash swept Yuzingmo's sword aside. A hundred threads of starlight burst from the tip of Yuzingmo's sword, threatening to swallow him up. Is this? Martial soul suppression. This realization left Yuzingmo dumbstruck, but he didn't stay defenseless. His star saint sword began to shine as he used his third soul skill. He became one with his sword as he fell back. An aura of starlight gathering around him and deflecting the incoming threads of starlight to either side of him. Threads also flew toward his Zhao who brandished his hammer with both hands like a sledgehammer, obliterating the threads with a single swing. Beside his Zhao Yue Sang Yu slashed out with his holy sword. Nine after images of his blade appeared in the air, and an instant later, the crisscrossing threads of starlight scattered into thin air. He didn't pause at all while doing this and continued to advance on Yuzingmo. As Yue Sang Yu slashed at her, Yuzingmo's first soul ring lit up. Starlight burst from her sword. This soul skill bore a striking resemblance to the one Yuzingmo used just now, except it was far brighter. She swung her sword to meet Yue Sang and a metallic clang rang out. His weapon having been readily deflected, Yue Sang Yu retreated
he knew he had just been saved. At that same moment, his Alpine reached his England. He brandished his hammer and used his first soul skill, tremor burst. A series of explosions rent the air, engulfing everything in a three-meter radius. His Alpine's eight-petal plum blossom silver hammer was no ordinary martial soul. It possessed an inkling of the space attribute. Yet his England still showed no fear. Her second soul ring lit up as she responded with a stroke of her sword, a net of starlight instantly blossoming into existence. The net was wide enough to encompass both his Alpine and Yuezhen Yu. She wasn't going to retreat in the face of just three opponents. Meanwhile, the blizzard continued to build up strength. Its frigid wind stabbed chilling daggers into everyone on the second grade team. Even the students in the audience that were closest to the stage could feel the temperature dropping. Tang Wulin and Yuan and Yui clashed once more at the center of the stage, rocking the entire arena with shockwaves of energy. The exchange sent both of them reeling backward. They were still evenly matched. Chapter 405, Devil Titan. By bringing the full power of his draconic blood to bear and using golden dragon body, Tang Wulin and his three soul rings were able to stand on even ground with the five-meter-tall Yuan and Yui whose strength was bolstered by Diamond Titan. Out of everyone present, this undoubtedly shocked Yuan and Yui the most. She knew that Tang Wulin was strong, but she thought he wouldn't be able to match her, especially since she just got her fourth soul ring. She had been certain that the gap between them had widened, yet Tang Wulin's strength surpassed all her expectations. His battle armor equipped dragon claw astounded her most of all. She had no choice but to bring out her reserve strength to resist the claw's crushing effect. Even with a cultivation base of four soul rings, she couldn't get off lightly before Tang Wulin's attacks. Just how strong is this guy's blood essence? Even with Diamond Titan activated, I can't match his strength. Is this the difference between men and women? That can't be. I've never met a guy as strong as him before. Tang Wulin felt free. His blood essence flowed in reverse, smooth and unhindered. His entire body felt as if it were aflame, blazing with strength. Every single one of his attacks hit like a truck, especially those he made with his right arm. The gauntlet amplified the effects of his blood essence, added weight to his punches, and made his golden dragon claw deadlier than ever. The basis of a battle armor's power is the armor's ability to fuse with its user. Only when it became one with its user could battle armor truly amplify its user's abilities. Then, by nurturing it and increasing the compatibility rate, the user would be able to have the battle armor grow stronger alongside them. Although Tang Wulin didn't craft his gauntlet with his own hands, by forging the star silver it had been made from, it was exceptionally compatible with him. The strength of his blood essence exceeded the norm to begin with, but with the gauntlet, his strength reached new heights. The gauntlet fully integrated with his golden dragon king bloodline, and after a few days of adapting to him, the gauntlet also brought newfound strength to it. Although he couldn't defeat Yuan and Yui right at that instant, he could easily keep her occupied. Yuan and Yui's gaze sharpened. Her first soul ring lit up, switching off with her third to use heightened strength. Her immense body seemed to become more solid, an aura of unstoppable might growing thick around her. She had always been a straightforward person, so she refused to show weakness in the face of Tang Wulin's strength. The two clashed again. The stage rumbling from the shockwaves created by their fists colliding once more. This time, Tang Wulin was the loser. He moved eight steps backward while Yuan and Yui only retreated by three. However, the greatness of battle armor was apparent now. The majority of the impact had been mitigated by a burst of starlight that Tang Wulin's gauntlet had released. Considering how tough his dragon claw was, he had sustained virtually no damage. His arm simply ached a little. He held his hand in front of his stomach. The scale on his arm rippling as if it were breathing, taking that attack had depleted a lot of his stamina, and although he had lost that exchange, he suffered no actual setback. Tang Wulin sucked in a deep breath, his abdomen swelling as his lungs filled with air, his eyes shone with golden light, his aura of gold solidified, and a thundering draconic roar emanated from his body, reverberating through the air. From his seat up on the platform, Scarlet Dragon Dulu Choi she stared wide eyed. That rat really succeeded. Streams of gold converged around Tang Wulin to form an illusory dragon's head behind him. He thrust his palms toward the sky and the dragon's roar grew more intense. The space around him went into a frenzy, preventing the blizzard from even approaching him. A grim look appeared on Yuan and Yui's face. She took half a step forward with her left foot, squatted low to the ground, and used her fourth soul skill for the first time. The hair covering her tightened body turned golden. Her body shrank a bit, but in exchange, her arms became twice as thick, bent on all fours like a gorilla. Her final form a primal might. Crimson bloodlust filled her eyes. She went into a berserk state exactly like that of the diamond baboon. This was no simple berserk state. Yuan and Yui's body had also transformed under its effects, combining the strongest traits of both the titan giant ape and the diamond baboon. Although her eyes were crimson now, they were still clear and bright. The berserk state hadn't affected her mind. This was the power of her fourth soul skill, which she got from her second soul ring, Devil Titan. As a result of the enmity between her titan giant ape blood and the diamond baboon spirit soul, she had endured an arduous trial trying to fuse with the spirit soul. She had newly faced cultivation deviation, but in the end, she succeeded in fusing with the diamond baboon spirit soul by using her fallen angel martial soul to suppress the two antagonistic bloodlines. The conflict between the bloodlines ultimately caused a mutation in her titan giant ape martial soul. This led to her titan giant ape form shrinking from five meters to four when she used Devil Titan. However, this certainly didn't signify a decrease in her strength. On the contrary, her strength increased as much as it did when she used Diamond Titan. In addition to that, Devil Titan doubled the potency of all of her abilities. However, such power came with numerous restrictions. Yuan and Yui had to use both Titan Strength and Diamond Titan before she could activate Devil Titan. Furthermore, she had to fuse with the Diamond Baboon Spirit Soul while using it. With three soul skills and the Berserk State piled atop each other, she consumed an immense amount of soul power. With her current cultivation level, she could only maintain this state for three minutes. But that would be a terrifying three minutes for her opponents. She hadn't used this soul skill a single time when she sparred with Shishi, yet she was already feeling the pressure from her brief clashes with Tang Wulin. She had no choice but to play this card. A dark gold sheen now covered her body. The madness in her crimson eyes striking fear into the hearts of all who saw them. The oppressive aura around her could practically be touched at this point. Those around her found it hard to breathe. Three minutes. That's more than enough. Watching from the edge of the stage, astonishment colored the Holy Spirit Dolores' face. Kids are so advanced these days. She's so strong with just four rings. Extraordinary. Yuan and Yui ferociously charged forward, swinging a gigantic fist toward Tang Wulin. While Yuan and Yui underwent her Devil Titan transformation, Tang Wulin's blood essence had recovered to peak strength. He pushed his palms out before him, the illusory golden dragon head roaring along with his movements and shooting forward. Everything within a five meter radius of him was instantly dyed gold. He unleashed golden dragon shocks the heavens. Tang Wulin may not have eaten a bean on this time, but he had spent the past three days refining golden dragon shocks the heavens. The one he unleashed this time wasn't any weaker than the one he used against Wusijuo. Golden dragon shocks the heavens met Yuan and Yui head on. A shockwave erupted from the center of the stage where both powerful forces met. It tore through the arena, stirring up a frenzy of air and dust and shaking the hall with a deafening thunderclap. The dust cleared quickly, revealing Tang Wulin and Yuan and Yui struggling against one another. A blazing red aura surrounded him, and her clenched fists were completely dyed gold. An effect of receiving golden dragon shocks the heavens. Then the two suddenly broke away from each other. A gust of wind rising up into the vacuum their energies left between them. The gust dispersed the frigid winds of the blizzard around them. The next instant, both closed the gap once again, throwing another punch at each other. An even louder shockwave rocked the arena, the barrier covering the stage slightly wavering before the combined might of the two. The clash sent Tang Wulin flying backward, and he crashed into the barrier, bouncing off of it and onto the ground. Yuan and Yui, on the other hand, managed to stand
Ronan and Louise had momentarily created a large gap in BUA's blizzard, the resulting shockwaves hindering the movements of both teams. Despite the danger, two figures traversed the stage in a flash of silverlight. Everyone else was too preoccupied to pay any attention to them. However, especially Shu Lizzie, he threw Bun after Bun at his teammates to keep their soul power reserves topped up. All while taking the time to defend BUA and Shu Xiaoyan, noticing the peril that Tang Wuling was in, he threw a Bun straight at him. Is that a bloodthirsty Bun? Yuan and Louise recognized it from their adventure in the spirit soul tower. I can't let him eat it. She punched out again, sending an air cannon toward the Bun. The golden blast of air striking and obliterating it. She then turned her attention from BUA back to Tang Wuling. She couldn't afford to focus on anyone else until she thoroughly defeated him. Tang Wuling struggled to his feet and wiped away the blood streaming from his nose and mouth. He didn't retreat or try to avoid Yuan and Yui. Instead, he charged forward to welcome her. A draconic roar rumbled from the depths of his body once more, and the two collided in midair. Yuan and Yui aimed a punch at Tang Wuling's shoulder, but she held back. Considering his wounded state, she was afraid that she would fatally injure him if she used her full strength. But Tang Wuling noticed this, sliding his foot to the side. He ducked under her punch. He made to grab her right arm with his claw and sweep his left foot behind her knee. It was a grappling technique from the Tang sect. This stunned Yuan and Yui, but only for a moment. She recovered her wits instantly and stomped her left foot into the stage. The ground cracked and shook under her strength, throwing Tang Wuling off balance and forcing him to miss his grab. Taking advantage of his broken stance, Yuan and Yui threw another punch at his shoulder, no longer caring about Tang Wuling's condition. Tang Wuling rolled his shoulder backward as her fist struck him, trying to mitigate as much of the force as he could. A resounding crack rang out as Tang Wuling flew backward, bouncing across the stage like a ragdoll. Concern flitted into Yuan and Yui's mind, but she pushed it aside and continued advancing toward Tang Wuling. This was a match, and she represented all of the second grade right now. Defeat was not an option. As the two of them brawled, a sudden change occurred on the other side of the battlefield. A pair of figures emerged from the blizzard, appearing in the backline of the second grade team. It was Shishi and his shadow dragon clone. Shishi stabbed his dagger toward by Han Yin's shoulder. Since this wasn't a real battle to the death, he had refrained from aiming to slit her neck. The other Shishi approached to an like lightning, stabbing its own dagger toward his hand before he could play another note. Shishi caught by Han Yin wholly unawares, but she still reacted instantly. Shishi's dagger passed through empty space as her body disappeared in a burst of cherry blossom petals, only for her to reappear a short distance away. As a support type soul master, it was only natural that she had a life saving soul seal for times like this. Meanwhile, Duan Hun flicked his wrist to meet Shishi's dagger with his flute. This Shishi pulled back his dagger before he struck the flute and retreated with ghost shadow perplexing step. Then he began circling around Duan Hun With his own strength alone, Shishi was keeping both of them occupied. He only chose this moment to strike because he had been waiting for the blizzard to regain its intensity and fully envelop the stage to obscure everyone's vision. On the front line, Yi Zingling had been utterly suppressed by Yi Zingling. He was battered, exhausted, and blood seeped from his chest, streaming from the wounds where her starlight spreads had cut into him. Yi Zingling was currently locked in battle against Yue Tang Yu and his outing. Her star god sword danced through the air as she alternated between her three soul skills, raining a barrage of deadly attacks upon them. She used her soul skills perfectly. Each had just enough soul power to get the job done. Despite facing two powerful opponents alone, she was never forced to go on the defensive. Yi Zingling was undoubtedly the person in the worst position on the battlefield. Fighting using England reduced him to half his original strength. After several exchanges with her, each time experiencing martial soul suppression, he realized that her martial soul was the star god sword. Martial soul suppression was a rare phenomena that only occurred with martial souls of common origin. Tang Wuling's golden dragon king bloodline suppressing everything with draconic blood was a perfect example of this. Using Mo's star saint sword was a powerful martial soul, but the star god sword completely surpassed it. He and Yi Zingling came from the same clan, but her martial soul was a variant. The star god sword had only appeared seven times in all of the Yi clan's history. The wielder of the star god sword always became the head of the Yi clan and led them into a new generation of prosperity. Yi Zingling was this generation's heir to the star god sword. It was only natural that Yi Zingling would have a sour face now. It was impossible for him to contend with the wielder of the star god sword with his star saint sword. His martial soul had been completely suppressed, so his only option was to change targets. He broke away from Yi Zingling and aimed his blade at Yu Yue and Xu Xiaoan. He wasn't worried about his teammates. His team also had their vice president, Yuan Hongxiao, whose strength was only second to Yuan and Yui's. He also had many tricks up his sleeve, trusting in his team's strength. He decided to try and take out the two girls and the food type soul master. Using Mo thrust out his star saint sword, aiming straight for Gu Yue. But at that same moment, starlight burst into existence beneath his feet. His connection with his sword was cut off, and a pure white palm snatched his head. Frigid cold pierced his body. His eyes only saw white now. The combo of Shu Shao and Star Wheel shackles and Gu Yue's elemental control made defeating a soul master as simple as that. Using Mo walked the path of an agility type soul master, so his defenses hadn't been much to begin with. A single second of absolute control with the Star Wheel shackles was all it took to stop him in his tracks. Shu Shao had spent the entire battle waiting for this opening. None of her other abilities were much to talk about. Not even her blizzard. Her greatest strength was her Star Wheel shackles. Although it had a simple effect, the number of ways it could be used in combat were endless. If used at the correct moment, it could turn the tide of battle. Gu Yue turned to Shu Shao Go help Singlin. I'll help Wuling. Green light enveloped her and she ran over to Tang Wuling. The time had come. In the three minutes they had before the match, Tang Wuling planned for Gu Yue and Xu Xiaoyan to lure one of their opponents in for an easy takedown. As long as they could take out one member of the second grade team, they could move on to the next phase of his plan. Shishi's task was to take advantage of the blizzard to launch sneak attacks on support or control type soul masters. Yi Zingling was charged with keeping her opponents occupied. Now, it was time for Tang Wuling and Gu Yue to join forces to defeat Yuan and Yui. Yuan and Yui sent Tang Wuling flying with another thundering bombardment of attacks. Astonishment filled her crimson eyes. This was now her second time absolutely thrashing him. She thought it would be impossible for him to get back up again, but he overturned her expectations. Tang Wuling struggled to his feet once more and rolled his shoulders with a wince of pain. Then he charged her once more. Is he made of steel? Yuan and Yui didn't dare underestimate Tang Wuling. She witnessed him crushing a draconic soul beast instantly before, so she understood just how deadly his golden dragon claw was. After another brief exchange, she sent him flying again. At that moment, Gu Yue arrived. She raised her hand and sent a barrage of icicles and wind blades hurtling toward Yuan and Yui. This surprised Yuan and Yui. What are you doing getting near me? An elemental type soul master getting into close range is just seeking death. Chapter 407. Exchange. Yuan and Yui didn't bother dodging Gu Yue's assault. Devil Titan increased her defenses just as much as it increased her strength. Even Tang Wuling's attacks, which were empowered by Golden Dragon Body, only sent tingles through her body. The barrage of wind blades and icicles only tickled her. She swatted at Gu Yue in annoyance, but before she could land a hit, a strand of blue silver grass wrapped around Gu Yue's waist and pulled her away. Tang Wuling had crawled back up from the floor once again and pulled Gu Yue out of harm's way. Yet, even as she retreated, Gu Yue continued to unleash an onslaught of elementals attacks upon Yuan and Yui. This guy. He's as tough as leather. Yuan and Yui punched at Gu Yue, this time sending a blast of air at her, but Tang Wuling pulled her out of the way again. He then charged Yuan and Yui with renewed vigor, throwing a bun into his mouth as he ran. A bloodthirst bean bun. Yuan and Yui recognized it instantly. That's why Gu Yue
The Holy Spirit Dilwoi stared wide-eyed. All of the titled Dilwoi's on the platform above moved to the edge of their seats. A small golden snake appeared in a flash of light, wrapping around Tang Wuling and Yu Yue to soften their landing. It absorbed the impact as they bounced to the ground, allowing Tang Wuling to remain on his feet upon touching down. He managed to only stumble a few steps, even with Yu Yue in his arms. After skidding to a stop, Tang Wuling coughed up a mouthful of blood. His body had taken quite the beating from going round after round with Yuan and Yu Yi. Even after eating the bean bun, his body felt heavy. How are you doing? Yu Yue asked. Tang Wuling shook his head. I'm fine. The bloodthirst effect is kicking in. Okay, go help Singlin then. I can handle this. All right. Tang Wuling took in two deep breaths, then took off running towards Yu Zinglin. While the two were talking, Yuan and Yu had been waving her arms frantically in an attempt to rid herself of the whirlpool's effects. In the end, she managed to disperse the five elements clinging to her, but not before the hairs on her arms were heavily damaged. In the interest of dealing a decisive blow, she had even used her broken right arm in the strike she just threw, relying on pure willpower to move the fractured bones. Her strength was waning. Devil Titan was wearing off. Yu Yue took a step toward Yuan and Yu. The instant her toes touched the ground, she disappeared in a flash of silver light, only to reappear directly in front of Yuan and Yu. Her face held no expression as she calmly raised a palm and thrusted at Yuan and Yu. Red, yellow, and blue energies shrouded that palm strike. She's engaging in close quarters. Yuan and Yu instinctively reacted with a punch, only for Yu Yue to disappear in a silver flash once more. A split second later, she appeared to the side of Yuan and Yu. She struck Yuan and Yu with her tricolored palm. The whirling elemental energies exploded upon contact. Even with all the strength that filled Yuan and Yu's bulky body, this strike sent her reeling backward. What happened next left everyone in shock. Yu Yue continued to teleport around Yuan and Yu, dodging each punch at the last possible instant, countering with an tri-element palm strike, then teleporting away again. If Yuan and Yu slammed the floor to create a shockwave, then Yu Yue struck from above. She was like a specter, impossible to catch. The spectating second grade students were dumbstruck. The first grade had someone like this. It had been shocking enough that Tang Wuling could go toe to toe with Yuan and Yu, but now Yu Yue appeared and toyed with her with this unorthodox battle style. Even someone as skilled at spatial control as Luo Dixing couldn't believe his eyes. Just how powerful is Yu Yue? She's Teleporting non-stop. Her spiritual power has got to be immense. Then there are those three element palm strikes. How is she able to unleash them so quickly? She's never showed anything like this before. Even in the selection tournament, her strength was still within the realm of plausibility. Is this her true strength? Two booms suddenly rang out from the other side of the stage, one after the other. The first came from his Zabang, having been sent careening backward by an explosive barrage of starlight threads. Xu Shaolin had rooted him in place with her starwheel shackles. Yi Zinglin then took advantage of this opening to unleash a barrage of starlight threads. A moment after that, white light enveloped him, and he disappeared. Of Yi Zinglin's two remaining opponents, one had been defeated. In the next instant, her second opponent, Yu Sang Yu, advanced with furious power. His radiant sword burst with holy flame, and he slashed it at Yi Zinglin, striking her star god sword at an odd angle. Yi Zinglin twisted to face the blow and muster up the best defense possible, but it sent her flying. Her body erupting in holy flame, white light enveloped her, and she departed the stage, having been eliminated as well. It was then Tang Wuling arrived at that side of the battlefield. He glanced at where Yi Zinglin had been and growled, Oh Zinglin, you're too arrogant for your own good. With her strength, Yi Zinglin would have had no problem stalling until Tang Wuling reached her, but in her arrogance, she chose to bring her battle to a head. She struck out and managed to take out his outbang. In doing so, she left herself open to Yi Sang Yu. Although she ended up falling to his blade, in a one versus two situation, she managed to take one opponent down and exhaust the other. She had already displayed her strength. The first and second grade students in the audience watched with bated breath. On the first grade side, Yi Zinglin had been eliminated. The second grade had lost both Yi Zinglin and his outbang. The first grade now held the advantage. It was five against four. Chapter four hundred and eight. A die situation. After dispatching Yi Zinglin, Yi Sang Yu took stock of the situation. He quickly noticed that his team was at a disadvantage and promptly took action. A holy aura enveloped him, and he raised his holy sword. His three soul rings taking on an intense sheen at the same time. He lit up like a soul bulb, ready as the sun itself. Powerful waves of holy might rolled off of him. With his sword raised to pierce the heavens, holy light descended around him. The entire stage basked in the brilliant splendor, an expanse of golden clouds gathered in the sky above. The very sight filled everyone with awe. Judgment. Yue Tang Yu's voice resounded throughout the arena, the entire stage trembling before his holy might. Three golden beams of light fell upon Tang Wuling, Shu Lizzie, and Shu Xiaoan. They swallowed them up in an instant, the figures disappearing. The beams were made of pure holy energy. Inside of them, Shu Lizzie and Shu Xiaoan felt as if their souls were ascending to a higher realm. They felt no pain or suffering, only a comforting warmth. However, the soul power in their bodies gushed out of them uncontrollably. In the blink of an eye, half of their soul power reserves were gone. Then weakness took hold of their bodies. Before this could go on any further, two beams of light shot out. They disrupted the beams of holy energy, taking their places on Shu Xiaoan and Shu Lizzie who whisked them away in a flash of light. Both were eliminated. No one had expected Yue Tang Yu to explode with such power. His attack carried the might of his three soul skills, possessing the power to dissolve the energy within his the bodies of his targets. The tide of battle had been turned in an instant. The moment his two teammates were eliminated, Tang Wuling's golden soul ring shone brightly. A golden aura blazed into existence around him and fought back the holy light. Compared to Yue Tang Yu's brilliant aura, Tang Wuling's aura held a hint of darkness. Five streaks of dark gold sliced through the holy light and continued onward to Yue Tang Yu. Spatial cracks appeared around Yue Tang Yu as the streaks approached him. In another flash of white light, Yue Tang Yu disappeared from the stage. With just a wave of her hand, the holy spirit Duo saved another student from fatal harm, and Yue Tang Yu was also eliminated. Tang Wuling may have defeated Yue Tang Yu by using both his golden dragon dread claw and blue silver golden ray, but he did not come away from the holy light unscathed. Immediately after retaliating, he fell to one knee, gasping for breath. The concentrated bombardment of holy judgment had depleted Tang Wuling's energies and washed away the bloodthirst effect. After taking a beating from Yuan and Yue, and now this, his reserves had now run dry. The first great team now found itself facing a dire situation. If Tang Wuling couldn't continue fighting, then only Du Yue and Shishi remained. To make matters worse, at that very moment, Du and Hang Xiao cornered Shishi's clone. As expected, the second grade is stronger in the end. Confidence limited in the eyes of the second grade students. Weakness weighed down on Tang Wuling's body. This battle had placed him under the most pressure. He had gone toe to toe with Yuan and Yu and kept her occupied. Had taken a full blast of holy might and had even mustered the strength he still had to take out Yue Tang Yu. But the battle wasn't over. Neither side had won yet. Tang Wuling pushed off the ground with his right hand, swaying and teetering until he found his footing. He then took in a deep breath, raised his hands, and began moving them in circles. The flow of his blood essence reversed once more. As he did that, the showdown between Du Yue and Yuan and Yu reached its climax. Du Yue danced like a specter, a figure flickering in and out of existence around Yuan and Yu. Each time she appeared, a tri-element palm strike quickly followed. Despite all her strength, all Yuan and Yu could do was passively defend. As the countdown on Devil Titan's duration reached its end, her expression grew darker and quickly soured into a frown. She had never considered switching to her fallen angel martial soul for this match. She kept it a secret that few were privy to. If she did use it, her true gender would be revealed. However, Yu Yue's
At that moment, a sharp, melodic sound pierced the air. On the other side of the battlefield, two figures stumbled backward and fused into one. Shishi stumbled, nearly falling to the ground. He had no way of defending against Duan Hung Xiao's attack. Duan Hung Xiao's eyes had a frosty edge to them. Despite being his team's controlled type soul master, he had failed to stop the enemy agility type soul master from attacking his teammate. He felt utterly humiliated. He had his own pride, and Yuan and Yui was the only person in his class that he respected. Shishi had used his surprise attack to throw by Hanying and Duan Hung Xiao into disarray, then worked with his coin to keep them occupied. However, his coin had been dispelled and he no longer had enough soul power to call another one. Duan Hung Xiao didn't let this opportunity go to waste. His third soul ring lit up and he blew into his flute. A screech pierced the air, a baleful aura enveloping Shishi. It was his third soul skill, Death Song. A sound wave attack that also affected the target's mind. By Hanying chose this moment to act. She waved the branch in her hand, scattering cherry blossom petals into the air. The petals drifted over to Yuan and Yui. The moment they touched her, her back straightened. Ferocity returned to her gaze, and a shimmering aura of white enveloped her. With her strength restored, she stomped at the ground. Space in a 10 meter radius of her warped and trembled. Gu Yue suddenly appeared out of thin air and dropped to the ground. After retreating a few steps, she took up her battle stance. Shen Yi and Wu Zhang Kong furrowed their brows at this sight. Yuan and Yui slowly strode over to Gu Yue, which she completely restrained by Duan Hangxia. His fate was decided. No suspense remained in this battle. By Hanying's cherry blossom petals were like a bridge between her and Yuan and Yui. She revealed a sweet smile as she stared at Yuan and Yui's back. This soul skill was called Lover's Bridge. Once formed, it linked the soul power reserves of the user and the target. The connection allowed by Hanying to funnel her soul power into Yuan and Yui. With access to a soul elder's soul power reserves, it was only natural that Yuan and Yui would be able to continue to fight in her pattern giant take form. Today's battle was full of surprises. With Tang Wuling's schemes and using Lin's strength, the first great team had been able to take out using Mo and his outing. However, they hadn't expected Yue's Hengyu to unleash such a powerful attack. Xu Xiaoyan and Xu Lizi had been eliminated in an instant. Although Tang Wuling took Yue's Hengyu down swiftly afterward, their supply line had already been cut off. The first great team's situation only worsened from there. Yet the second great team still had Yuan and Yui, the four rings doing Hangxia, and the support type by Hanying. It was clear which side would win. The roar of the dragon filled the stage. Tang Wuling's body glowed gold as he walked to Yue's side. The two now stood shoulder to shoulder. At that moment, a white light flashed, and Shishi disappeared from the battlefield. He reappeared beside the Holy Spirit Dulu an instant later. He hadn't been able to endure the death song any longer. Duan Hangxia turned to face them Tang Wuling and Gu Yue. It was now two versus three. If Tang Wuling were in peak condition, then maybe there would have been hope. However, since the bloodthirst effect wore off, he was in a weakened state. His golden aura wasn't as magnificent as it usually was. With just him and Gu Yue remaining, there was no hope for victory. Yuan and Yui came to a stop and looked Tang Wuling in the eye. Surrender. Even if they lost, they had already earned enough glory. There was a three-year age difference between grades at Shrek Academy. The gap in strength that three years of time created was like that of heaven and earth. But Tang Wuling couldn't give up here. Tang Wuling's gaze did not possess its usual calm. Determination still burned brightly in it, so bright that his eyes resembled a pair of eyeballs. He held his head high as he strode forward. The dragons were growing louder with each step. He stopped a short distance ahead of Yue. She stared at him blankly, the sight of his broad shoulders still in her eyes. Duan Hang brought his flute back up to his mouth. With a cold glint in his eyes, he sucked in a deep breath and prepared to blow. If Tang Wuling and Yue didn't concede, he would immediately launch his attack. Yuan and Yue sighed. Defeating her opponent in a battle was a show of respect. I shouldn't have asked. Tang Wuling smiled. He slowly raised his dragon claw and squeezed out the last shred of strength in his body, pushing his golden soul ring shine brightly once more. Chapter 409 Tang Wuling knew the battle was hopeless, but he did not cower and surrender. Even in defeat, he would stand with his back straight and head held high. It wasn't just his own pride that he had to protect. He stood there on the stage as the champion of the entire first grade. Defeat was acceptable, but surrender was not. All of the first grade students got to their feet, standing straight and watching the finale with clenched fists. At that moment, all of their hearts were united as they desperately hoped Tang Wuling would create a miracle. That's our class president. We see Joy clenched her fists tighter than anyone else. Her knuckles strained white. She yearned to be up on that stage with them. Maybe, just maybe. If I were up there too, maybe we could have won this match. You're not allowed to lose, Tang Wuling. Up on the platform, Ella Kai nodded slightly. Even in defeat, there is honor. He's living up to the legacies of Shrek Academy and the Tang sect. Feng Wuyu snorted, but didn't say a word. Chao Oishi furrowed his brow. His grand disciple had already proven himself, but this was Shrek Academy. There had never been a shortage of monsters here. Tang Wuling was not weak. His opponent was too strong. None of them believed that Tang Wuling and Yu Yue had a shot at winning. The Holy Spirit Dulo watched the scene unfold with calm eyes. Yuan and Yui raised a fist and strode across the stage to meet Tang Wuling. Duan Hang Xiao took a deep breath and prepared to blow on his flute. A faint smile tugged at the corner of the Dulo's mouth as her gaze moved to Tang Wuling. But an instant later, shock replaced the calm. Yu Yue snapped out of her daze and stopped staring at Tang Wuling's back. She took a step forward and hugged him from behind. W, what is she doing? Even if you like him. Do you really have to do that during a battle? And you two are so young too. What on earth is she doing? No one could comprehend what they were seeing. Yuan and Yui and Duan Hangxiao were dumbstruck. The lovers bridge that connected by Hanying and Yuan and Yui wavered. The teachers on the platform had blank looks on their faces. The lifeless dragon roar coming from Tang Wuling's body suddenly grew stronger. His blood essence surged with power. Strands of red, blue, yellow, green, gold, silver, and black rose from Gu Yue's body, intertwining to become one before merging into Tang Wuling's body. The seven colors spread across his golden scales, painting them with their hues, and the regal majesty of his aura grew even further. Tang Wuling couldn't understand what was happening. All he knew was that his body was now bursting with power. The unprecedented level of power thrashing within him made his entire body tremble. His seven colored scales grew thicker, turning transparent as they spread to cover the rest of his body. He was soon clad in an armor of shining translucent scales. The dragon within him roared, looking upon the whole world with disdain. Up on the platform, Scarlet Dragon Dulu Chaoishi and Blazing Dragon Dulu Feng Wu groaned. Their faces contorted with horror, clearly feeling their martial souls being suppressed. If their cultivation levels weren't so much higher than Tang Wuling's, they would have already been prostrating themselves before him. What's going on? Tang Wuling floated a few meters into the air. His dragon claw now gleamed with seven resplendent colors, clenching it into a fist. Duan Hang Xiao reacted quickly to the change. His fourth soul ring lit up and he blew an ear note, creating a sound wave so powerful that it may as well have been tangible. The wave rolled toward Tang Wuling, threatening to swallow him whole, but when it was only five meters away from him, the space around him warped and the sound wave disappeared. The flute went silent. Then Tang Wuling turned to Yuan and Yui, instantly crossed the distance between them, and punched. Only then did Yuan and Yui recover from her shock. She let out a battle cry and threw both her fists forward to meet Tang Wuling's attack, drawing out every last drop of strength from her body. However, inches before Yuan and Yui's fists met Tang Wuling's, the space around her distorted. She felt as if she were trying to move through a quagmire. No matter how much strength she exerted, her body refused to move forward. A seven colored light engulfed the entire battlefield in an instant. The colors mingled together. Swelling back and forth until all the spectating students could see encompassing the stage
They've lost consciousness. The Holy Spirit Duo was the first to speak. Both sides have been defeated, but since I had to save the remaining second grade students at the end, victory goes to the first grade. Although both Tang Wulin and Gu Yue lost consciousness, they remained standing. Both were leaning into each other, neither one allowing the other to fall. The students of the first grade did not cheer. Passionate tears flowed from their eyes instead. At that moment, all of them recognized Tang Wulin as their rightful class president, and Gu Yue as their vice president. Then realization dawned on them. Glory went to the first grade. They had won. We're students of the first grade. They all shouted within their hearts, fire blazing in their eyes. Yuan and Yui's mask of calm finally cracked. She clenched her fist and stared at the two people nestled against each other on the stage. Up on the platform, Elder Kai stared at the duo in astonishment. It's a soul fusion skill. That was the only explanation she could come up with. There was no other way to explain the transformation that occurred when Gu Yue hugged Tang Wuling. Chuo Shi wore a pensive expression. That punch. It created a vacuum. Instead of immediately refuting what Chuo Shi said, Feng Wu nodded in agreement. Yes. It was a vacuum. All seven elements were stripped away, leaving only a space that needed to be filled. No energy remained. No fire, water, earth, wind, light, darkness, or even spatial energy. Wuling's punch created a vacuum devoid of the seven elements. I never would have thought they would be able to use a soul fusion skill like that with two unrelated martial souls. I'll call that move the Dragon King vacuum punch. Are their martial souls really unrelated? Chuoishi stared at the two students on stage, his eyes narrowing to slits. Chuoishi had taught Tang Wuling the basis of golden dragon shocks the heavens, so he understood it best. If that's truly the case, why did I feel his blood essence explode with strength when they transformed? Has his bloodline sublimated? No, that can't be. Even if he used a soul fusion skill, there's no way that could have happened. When they went to move Tang Wulin and Yue from the stage, they were surprised to find her latched onto him like a clamp. It was impossible to remove her from him. Chapter 410, Unconscious. Since they couldn't separate Yue from Tang Wulin, Feng Wuyu, Chuoishi, and Holy Spirit Duluo Yali ended up bringing them back to the working student dormitory in one bundle. Yali, are their bodies okay? Chuoishi asked. The Holy Spirit Duluo shook her head. There's no real problem with their bodies. They're just exhausted. That transformation was too much for them to bear, so they'll need time to recover. Truth be told. Their soul fusion skill is quite strange. Generally speaking, a soul fusion skill can be used when both soul masters have at least three rings, but it looks like the soul fusion skill of these two is far more demanding. Or maybe it would be more accurate to say that it's exceedingly powerful. It simply consumes too much of their energy. Fortunately, they have good foundations, so they just need time to rest and recover now. They'll need a full month of rest. One month? Hearing this from Shrek Academy's most powerful healer left Feng Wuyu and Chuoshi flabbergasted. The value of a soul fusion skill that required a month's rest after using it was dubious. However, this also served as proof to just how overbearing Tang Wulin and Yue's soul fusion skill was. They didn't actually complete their soul fusion skill either. Yali said, Yeah, I felt my heart race when they used it. The more compatible two people are, the more powerful their soul fusion skill is. Even if we search all of history, it would be hard to find more than a handful of people whose fusion rate exceeded 80%. The highest fusion rate ever recorded is that of Spirit Ice Duo Huo Yuao and his wife, Dragon Butterfly Duo Tang Wutong. They both had twin martial souls that enabled them to use a total of four soul fusion skills. They are praised as the strongest duo in all of history. It's been said that their fusion rate even approached 100% compatibility. Some historians whose research focused on Huo Yuao and his wife stated that any soul fusion skill capable of reaching 100 fusion rate would be considered a divine fusion. If both soul masters were at a sufficiently high enough level, using such a soul fusion skill would allow them to exhibit power on par with the god. Although I only have an inkling of a suspicion, the soul fusion skill of these two children might be on par with the divine fusion soul skill. I can't imagine any other reason why their soul fusion skill would be so powerful. We'll need to keep a close eye on them. If my suspicion turns out to be correct, then Shrek Academy will have picked up a pair of real treasures. Feng Wuyu and Chuoishi looked at each other in dismay, both sharing a bitter smile. It was impossible to examine Tang Wulin and Yu Yue's soul fusion skill at the moment. One years alone left them bedridden for a month. This was too high a price to ask the two children to pay. They were in the spring of their youth. The amount they could grow in a month was enormous. Blood essence bubbled, surging forth like a raging river. Tang Wulin opened his eyes to find himself within his spiritual world. It stretched out before him like a sea of stars, countless. Specks of gold floated, suspended in space. The golden hole from before was nowhere to be seen. Then he looked up. To his astonishment, an enormous golden dragon floated above him. It was too large for him to even fathom. Its body seemed to stretch on forever. There were 18 rings of light around the dragon's body. Three glowed a soft blue, while the rest were a blazing red. Is this the golden dragon king sealed within my body? Those rings of light must be the seals then, right? Tang Wulin began to collect his thoughts, but he couldn't quite recall what happened before he woke up in this spiritual world. All he remembered was the warmth of Gu Yue's body when she hugged him, his blood essence surging with power, and himself subconsciously unleashing a punch. His mind had already been a haze by then. The last thing he could recall was the moment when the translucent scales began covering his body. Everything after that was blank. Old Tang, are you here? Tang Wulin shouted. Maybe Old Tang can explain what happened. However, only silence answered him. Old Tang was nowhere to be found. The golden dragon floating above Tang Wulin suddenly stirred. It raised its head and unleashed a heaven rending roar. A wave of dizziness struck Tang Wulin, stars dancing in his vision. Then the scene before him blurred and changed. He saw an enormous dragon with a seven colored aura floating in the air. Countless beasts on the ground below it and in the air around it roared in respect, shaking Tang Wulin down to his very core. The horde of beasts then began rushing in one direction like a giant wave. A thundering voice boomed in Tang Wulin's head, so loud that it felt like a spiritual attack. My fate is mine to decide, not the heavens. Then he lost consciousness again. Some time later, Tang Wulin woke up. The scene of the dragon and the horde of beasts still fresh in his mind. Simply recalling that scene made his heart race. He groaned in pain. His eyes shot open. A familiar ceiling told him he was back in the working student dormitory. He tried to sit up but didn't have the strength. His head immediately fell back onto his pillow. Then he noticed a warmth pressing against his body. He heard the gentle sound of breathing. Looking down, he was stunned to find a pair of arms wrapped around him. Ha! Huh? Is that? Gu Yue! Ow! Oh, my head hurts. Tang Wulin leaned back and finally noticed that Gu Yue was embracing him from behind. Both of them were still wearing the clothes they had battled in. He tried to pry her arms from him gently. There's no other way. Don't move. A dissatisfied voice rumbled into his ear. An instant later, he felt the arms around him tighten their hold. He felt like he was being constricted by a pair of snakes. Throwing caution to the wind, he hastily separated himself from her. That was when Gu Yue finally woke up. W, what are you doing in my bed? She cried. Tang Wulin seized the opening and jumped off the bed. A bout of vertigo washed over him and he stumbled. His body was still weak. Gu Yue stared at him, her eyes full of astonishment. Tang Wulin felt his throat go dry. Ah, uh, see this. It's actually my bed. Gu Yue tried to get up. A wave of dizziness struck her. Tang Wulin rushed to support her. He could smell the freshness of spring wafting from her. She blushed crimson and struggled free from his grasp, then stumbled over to her own bed. No one else was in the room. The sun already shone brightly outside. It looks like it's morning, so everyone else should be in class. Tang Wulin looked at Gu Yue, but she averted her gaze and lowered her head. Awkward tension filled the air. Amidst this strange atmosphere, another bout of vertigo hit Tang Wulin and he had to lay down. Gu Yue seemed to experience the same thing and fell onto her bed
How am I talking nonsense? Did you forget already? We've already moved to the next room over. Why did you choose to stay in this room if you didn't want to? You could have just walked next door as soon as you woke up. Huh? I. I forgot. I'm telling you, I really forgot. Xu Xiaowen was correct. Right after Xu Lizzie and Yu Xingling joined their group, they became working students and got another room to move all the girls into. Gu Yue couldn't believe she had forgotten this. Let's go. Gu Yue shot to her feet and rushed out the door. The sweet laughter of Xu Xiaowen following close behind. Tang Wuling pretended he was still asleep until he could no longer hear them. Then he opened one halfway and took a peek at the room to make sure no one was there. Confident that he was alone, he let out a sigh of relief. But then a round face popped out of his blind spot and peered down at him. Thanks so much for watching this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Also leave a comment down below with suggestions on what novels to read.